This is my first time doing a redhead. Woo! Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Thrain, and I am here with today with Bree, and we're gonna do a big transformation. Bree's been red; she's been blonde. You can see right now she has some pre-existing highlights. She she kind of has a lot going on, to be honest. Um, but so she's a natural level six, so she's a dark blonde. Yeah. So stay tuned and see what we do. I'm gonna start off by doing a little bit of a root shadow. So that's what I'm applying right now. Now, for those of you joining at home, what I'm using is I'm using Cless on Perfect, seven stroke, three, four. So a level seven medium blonde uh, with a gold red. So that's gonna give us our very nice auburn shade. But I also mixed in some seven stroke, one, seven. So you might be thinking, well, why is the bald guy adding in some ash to his formula? Uh, and the reason is, is because I think sometimes with reds, we get very nervous about hot roots, right? But the one thing, my key to success with redheads is making sure that you're compensating for the warmth that you're revealing as you're slightly lifting. So what this is gonna do is the seven stroke one seven will slightly calm down some of the underlying pigment, but the seven stroke three four will give us that nice, beautiful auburn shade. So for all my colorists at home, we know when the hair is too light and we are, we're going two or more levels darker, we need to pre-fill the hair, right? So since Brie has a little bit of stuff going on in her hair right now, I'm gonna be using nine stroke three, so it's a level nine light blonde gold. Uh, just has like a little bit of a filler on her ends and then that's gonna prepare it for the auburn shade that I'm gonna be putting on top of it. For those of you at home, what's the, one of the things that happens around the hairline when you apply your tint? Sometimes it can go dark, right? So by starting where the texture changes, this is great because I can make sure that her hairline doesn't over deposit or over lift uh, by starting where that texture is. Because we know that hair along the hairline tends to be a little bit finer and I don't want that to get like <laughs> Ronald McDonald. All right, so now through the back, I, I work with my bricklay, so everything processes and oxidizes evenly. So through the front, um, I have her split down the center, but I'm just gonna kinda toggle from side to side, just so that way I'm not doing one full side and then one full side. So I'm gonna do like one, two, three, one, two, three. I prefer to use a smaller tint brush just because that gives me a little bit more control. Uh, and I, I don't know, I think of the head as like a little disco ball. So like if you think about like the head, it has like all these kind of like little like square plates. So this one kind of fits on to this the disco ball perfectly. So then I'm able to do more of a precision application. Uh, all right, so now when I'm working around the hairline, I always am very meticulous and I like to make sure that I have no ma massive staining around her hairline. I'm taking pretty fine subsections and even what I can do is I'll, I'll grab some of that tint on my French color comb. And I'll just grab these little, she's got like the perfect little baby hairs, and then just kind of roll that back and on. And then it's a flawless hairline. All right, so now I'm gonna go through and let her process uh, for half of the processing time. So I'm gonna let her process for 15 minutes I'm gonna go through, mist down her mid links and ends, and then I'm gonna apply my Color Touch Fill, which is nine stroke three, just to give my highlights, because she's got some different levels going on. I just wanna give it a nice base, and then I'm gonna glaze everything with some Color Touch. So, stay tuned. All right, so now I'm gonna mist down Bree's hair. Um, so, we knew that we were gonna do somewhat of a little bit of a color correction today. So, since I have her root shadow on right now, uh, with Cless on Perfect. I had Brie come in with shampooed, clean hair, but it wasn't damp, but so we know Color Touch is recommended on damp hair. So I'm just using my Wella Studio water bottle to mist down her hair, so that way I have nice, even porosity and all that good stuff. I'm gonna be applying my Color Touch Fill. I'm gonna start in the back nape area, 
just so that way I can bring everything back and into a foil. So now I'm using my, my big color brush because I am just going to be trying to get as quickly as possible through these mid lengths and ends. Now you can notice that I don't, I'm not meshing my Coleston Perfect and my Color Touch together. Um, Cause I like to say that they're cousins, but they're not kissing cousins. So I am using my Color Touch Fill and I am using nine stroke three, so level nine gold. And this is just going to help set up her ends for when I go through and I do a color touch glaze all over at the shampoo bowl. Now one thing I'm always kind of coaching colorists on in the Wella studio is when you're combing through the hair, like if you're, if you're kind of making sure that all this color is nice and saturated, you want to make sure that you're not like scooping and pulling that color off. So I'm actually just like using like the very edge of my color comb. So then that way I can make sure that the color is still saturated, but I'm not pulling it off. So I'm gonna first show you what not to do. So if we see how we kind of comb that and see how I'm scooping, and it's actually pulling all that color off, that means that her color is not gonna be consistent. So what I wanna make sure I'm doing is, as I'm applying, I'm gonna actually apply a little bit more color, and then I'm just gonna use the very teeth of my comb to rake through and make sure that that color is nice and the hair is not bunched up and and nice and easily easily smoothed and full saturation. So I'm gonna be passing this over to Tommy. He's gonna be shampooing because I don't shampoo anymore. So we're gonna get Brie all shampooed for Eric and I'm gonna start off by removing the color on her front hairline. So we always wanna remember color removes color. So before we go ahead and start applying any water, we wanna remove any additional color that might remain. So I'm just taking the color that's already on Brie's scalp and we're just gently gonna emulsify that and help remove that color Eric applied in her hairline. When we say color removes color, I'm literally saying exactly that. I'm taking the existing color that's already on Brie's head, it's been processing for the full processing time, and I'm just emulsifying it with itself. It's almost like if you've ever gotten gum on your clothing and you've tried to get it off, the best way to remove gum is to take a little bit more gum, right? It just like adheres to itself really well. You could think of dye molecules in the same way. So it's just gonna help to really pick up any of that color that might be really clinging to the scalp or the hairline. All right, so now that Brie has her lovely auburn root shade um, and we have filled her ends, I'm gonna be doing a color touch application of the shampoo bowl um, because, I mean, I prefer to do a bottle application of the shampoo bowl because it can tend to get a little messy. So for uh, Brie, I have pre-mixed my color touch shade. I use H stroke three, which is a light blonde gold mixed with an H stroke four three. So that's a level eight light blonde red gold. Now here's a little pro tip. Before I use my bottle, I wanna make sure that I test some of this product on a piece of foil before I actually apply it to my, my client's head. Because if all of that color isn't mixed properly first, then you might get a little whoopsie doopsie. So I'm gonna be inserting my bottle and then I'm gonna be pulling it back. So as I'm pulling this bottle, I'm applying to the root area and I'm just working horizontally down the head and I can just emulsify that color in. Once I get this color touch application on, cause you can see that her hair is damp. So this color touch is just really gliding through the hair really nicely. Um, I'm gonna let it process for 20 minutes. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret. I see a lot of colors do this where they're like, ooh. I say, once you apply your color, let it be. I say stop petting the cat. So don't don't keep massaging and, and working that product through once you've got it fully saturated and applied. Just let the color do its thing. Now when I'm going into the nape, I can still insert my bottle and as I'm pulling my bottle outward, I'm dispensing the product and then I can just 
emulsify, and I'm not really worried about going over her regrowth again because, hey, Color Touch is super shiny, and I'm going to, once I fully saturate and slightly just rake through the color, I'm gonna let her process for 20 minutes. Ta-da! Now her copper on her ends is done, so I'm super excited because I'm gonna be using new Color Fresh masks, and I decided to go with my Copper Glow. Ooh. And, and this is why I'm doing it at the shampoo bowl is because this is basically a conditioner. It's a conditioning mask with color in it. But I'm gonna work this in. So you could apply a Color Fresh mask with a color brush. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, what I think about these is that they're conditioners, right? So why not apply it like a conditioner? Uh, so I can work this through. I'm gonna use a wide tooth comb. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous color depositing mask. With the Color Fresh mask, these can also be retail. So, so Brie, I can send you home with this. Yay! And you can use this once a week okay. to maintain your color because we also know that reds are prone to fadage. So. Finance, we're gonna send one home with her. Uh, <laughs> it's a really easy kind of color maintenance at home and you don't really have to worry about in between salon appointments. All right, so I'm gonna let you sit for 10 minutes. You can take a nap or something, uh, and then we'll we'll rinse this side <laughs> out. Perfect. So I prepped Bree's hair with my Nioxin Density Defend for color-treated hair. Um, I love this stuff because it just kind of melts into the hair, um, but it's actually a lightweight strengthening foam. So I love this because Bree's hair is, is on the finer side. She has a pretty good density, but I just wanted something to give her some strength. Uh, but I am layering on Dark Oil by Sebastian. And just a little stylist tip, I always work from my lightest weight product up to my heaviest product. So the last product that I'm putting in is a little bit of Sebastian Mousse Forte. So Mousse Forte is a great mousse. Um, I do wanna give her a fabulous like round brush blowout. So I'm gonna go through and just apply this through the hair. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna give her some volume. So I'm actually using my Platinum Plus GHD Styler. Uh, and so if you notice like how I'm kind of working with my iron, I'm actually taking vertical subsections to give more elongation. Um, and so it's not so like bouffanty. I'm actually, instead of pulling straight out, I am pulling straight down. Her hair is real long. But so what that it does is it elongates the curl. So then it will create this really nice S wave pattern. So I do wanna like switch hands, so then that way my waves will be nice and consistent. But so dragging that hair downward versus out, and that will give me more of that elongated wave versus like a Shirley Temple like boing. As soon as we curl or wave hair, we like to brush through it right away, but let's listen to science. Um, so the hair actually has to cool down before you brush through it, so then that way the style really lasts, especially with Bree's hair since it's more on the finer side. She has great hair, honestly. Ooh, oh my goodness. So I am uh, just using a little bit of hairspray. I love like this kind of like soft, glamoury, beachy wave. I woke up like this. Yes, I mean. You will tomorrow. Uh, another little stylus tip is I also love using a, um, a cushion brush. I always like to dress out my waves and make sure um, I use this to like smooth out any like little flyaways, um, getting it all nice and kind of smooth. Sometimes what I'll even do is take my cushion brush and just lightly mist it with some lightweight workable hairspray like Sebastian Zero Gravity. My goodness, it's so shiny. <gasps> Gorgeous. All right, Brie, what do we think of your hair? I'm loving it. Yeah, I mean, I honestly think that this hair color is so nice on you because it really complements your skin tone and your eye color. So one thing I'm really big on is suitability when it comes to hair color, so. I love it, and I'm and I'm gonna send you home with some color fresh masks today, so you can maintain it at home. Yay! 
All right, guys, so thank you for joining in and tuning in to Wella Education Exposed. Um, so stay tuned for more episodes if you enjoyed hanging out with me and Brie today um, and creating this lovely auburn red tone. So stay tuned and remember to come check me out on Instagram at Eric, E R I K dot Wella. And then also, if you want to come and hang out and take a class with me, head over to WellaEd.com. Did I do that right?